What's up guys, I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California. And I wanted to just explain some film terms that I feel like we commonly throw out in Facebook groups or just in chatting on Instagram or whatever. And I know when I was starting out in film, a lot of them were foreign to me and you might shoot digital photos a bunch and you might not hear a lot of these terms spoken about. And so you have to Google them or whatever and you just kind of feel stupid. That's how I felt at least. And so I just wanted to go through a few different terms that I've found people have asked me, shot me DMs or whatever. And so these are the ones I've been writing down over the last couple of weeks and I hope it helps. Okay, first one is ISO. So I feel like digital photographers don't talk about ISO all that much. Really the only conversation is like, how high of ISO can you shoot at in low light? And so that's pretty much as much as ISO conversations I have in digital. But with film, you're actually choosing your ISO when you choose your film. So Portrait 400 is 400 ISO. Portrait 800 is 800 ISO. Portrait 160 is 160 ISO. So when you get to somewhere and you're checking the light and seeing how much light you have to work with, that's when you're choosing which film you're gonna load up into your camera. But then you have to shoot that entire roll in that light. So it's just something that film photographers are a lot more cognizant of. You just have to just pay a lot more attention to. I would say 400 films the most common. People shoot Fuji 400 or Portrait 400 for the most part. You can have a pretty good range with this film and you can shoot in kind of shade all the way to kind of a little bit lower light and full bright sun. So yeah, I hope that explains ISO a little bit. Another thing with ISO too is it's gonna control how much grain is in the photo. So Portrait 160 is gonna have the least amount of grain and Portrait 800 or 800 speed film is gonna have a little bit more grain in the photo. Specifically with Portra, that's kind of the one that I use the most, so that's what I speak to. Portrait 160 is the least saturated, Portrait 400 is kind of the, the median, and then Portrait 800 is the most saturated. So that's just kind of how that varies too. Okay, next term is box speed. So when people say like, oh, I shoot Portrait 400 at box speed, that means that they rate and meter the film at 400 ISO. I would say people that shoot Fuji 400 typically rate it at 200 or maybe even 100 ISO. I'd say a lot of people that shoot Portrait 400 rate it around 400, 320, and some people rate it at like 200 or so, so that'd be like a full stop overexposed. Rating film, so when people say rating film, that's just kind of choosing what ISO you want to rate your film at. And so you're not actually changing the ISO of the film. You're loading Portrait 400 into your camera and then you have to choose to shoot that roll in a consistent way across the entire roll. So if I meter at 400 for the first few frames, I should be metering at 400 for the entire roll. So that's kind of what rating your film is, is, is choosing what ISO you want to use. There's a nominal ISO guide that Kirk Maston made that I go off of and I've really found works for me. Uh, most film, I feel like he says to meter like a half stop overexposed. I'll link to that below and so you can check that out. So metering, that's another term that people throw out. So this is like an external light meter. I don't see a lot of digital photographers using these. This is gonna tell you the settings for when you're taking a photo. So you basically just click this button right here and it will tell you what aperture or shutter speed um, that you take it at. So first you have to choose what ISO. So if I'm gonna shoot Portrait 400, I'm gonna rate it at maybe 320 ISO, a half stop overexposed. So I change my ISO to 320 and then whatever light I'm in, I'm going to meter and then it's gonna tell me 2.8 at 1 30th of a second. So, and then you can choose, you can change it and choose what, you know, aperture you want or what shutter speed you want. So these are really nice to use. There's metering itself has a lot of nuances too. So people say bulb in, which this is an incident meter. So it's reading what light falls onto this bulb. Bulb in will give you a little bit less light reading and so it will over help you kind of overexpose your image a little bit. Film does a lot better overexposed and so I usually meter bulb in just to kind of err on the side of overexposing. 
I also meter a lot of the times for the shadows. So if I'm taking a metering of my face, this would be the highlights if I hit the meter right here. And then this would be the shadows over here or like this. And so if I meter that, that's 2.8 at a half a second. If I meter for the highlights, that's 2.8 at 1 30th of a second. So there's quite a different range right there. And then I'm gonna choose those settings depending on what kind of look that I want. Another term that people use for film is pushing film or pulling. Most people don't pull film, it's not a pretty common practice, but pushing film is pretty common. So that would be, I do that a lot with my portrait film, almost every roll. So that means I shoot a roll of Portrait 400 rated at a different speed. So I usually rate it at 640. And then when I drop it off the lab, I put a little plus one on the roll of film and I tell the lab to develop it plus one. So that's pushing it one stop. It kind of takes my 640 ISO and makes it 320. So it's like I'm overexposing Portrait 400 a half a stop. And what pushing film does is it gives me more ISO to work with so I can shoot in lower light. And then it also just adds a little bit of contrast and saturation, which I really like in my photographs, it kind of fits my style better. And so that's what I'm, I lean towards is just that pushed film look. The only um, bad side to it is there can be a little bit of color shift in the shadows and in kind of all the colors, there can be just a tad of bit of color shift. And so it's just something that you have to be careful of. And when you get your film back, sometimes you might have to manipulate it a little bit just to get it back to normal. But Goodman Film Lab, who I use, does a great job. And I really like the look pretty much straight from the lab. So that's what pushing film is. So if you pushed Portra 160 and you rated it at 160, that would mean you would shoot it at 320 and then you push it plus one and then that would get you back to 160 or push portrait 800, you shoot it at 800 or 1600, and then you push it a stop and it gets you back to 800. So that's kind of how pushing a stop of film works. And you can push up to one, two, even three stops. I would say I wouldn't, I don't, I've never pushed um, color film three stops, but black and white, there's a couple black and whites that you can. I like Tri-X 400 black and white, pushing that one stop, that gives me a lot of contrast and I really like to look at that as well. Another thing is 35 millimeter film versus 120. Don't, don't call it 120 millimeter. All the film photographers will hate on you. I've made that mistake before. So this is 120 film. So it comes in a roll like this. Open it up, that's what it looks like. It's on a spool and you load that in there and then kind of pull it across just like 35 millimeter film, but it's just a lot bigger. So you can see, you just have a lot more area. So this is for medium format cameras, and then this is 35 millimeter, which is the most common. A 35 millimeter frame is equivalent to a full frame DSLR. So one 35 millimeter frame is the same as your full frame DSLR. Medium format, you can have six by four and a half, six by six, six by seven, six by nine. There's a lot of different aspect ratios that they have, but it's just a much larger negative, and so you're gonna get a lot better quality and then less grain with medium format film. So that's kind of the differences between the two. Um, if I shoot 645, I'll get 16 frames on one roll, and these are usually 24 or 36 frames on a 35 millimeter film. So yeah, it's a little bit cheaper to shoot 35 millimeter, um, than medium format, but the quality and the look of medium format, I think it's far superior to any full frame cameras out there. And so I think that's why a lot of people shoot medium format is just, it gives that really beautiful look that you can't really get out of a full frame camera. That's pretty much it. Those are the ones that I wrote down over the last few weeks. If there's any terms that you hear thrown around that you want explained, please drop those below and I will try to explain those in a future video or just reply to you in the comments. If you like this video, please like it. And if you want to subscribe to see more videos, I've got a lot of other videos that I'm working on. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks.